What's going on guys? In this video, I'm going to show you how to turn your footage from good into great. How's it going guys? Jonathan from Gons Media here. And if we're just meeting for the first time, I help real estate video creatives get more out of their business and maximize their profits. So if that sounds like something you're interested in, do me a favor and hit the like and subscribe buttons down below. We're going to go ahead and jump right into this. In this video, I'm going to show you my top five tips to improve your real estate videos. Um, these are gonna be tips that are, you know, they're not extremely well known. Um, these are just things that I've learned over time and I feel they help me in my videos and my style. They may not be a fit for everybody, but if you follow along, they might, you might find something that you're interested in. So let's go ahead and get started. So first things first, this video is assuming you've already landed the clients. This is not the business side of videography. This is assuming you had landed the client, you've got a real estate shoot tomorrow and you're watching this video. Here's some five tips that are gonna help you to really improve the footage. Um, first things first, personal preference, I shoot in 24 frames per second. It's not a fit for everybody. A lot of people like the slow, look, slow down look of 60 frames, but I shoot in 24 because I like the real time cinematic look it gives. I feel there's a big difference between 60 and 24 as you can see in these clips here. All right, tip number one, guys, you're gonna wanna film at about chest level. Oftentimes, if we're up here, it's a little too high and we get too much ceiling, not enough floor. A little too low, we get too much floor, not enough ceiling, or we're below the furniture and we can't really see the room. So typically, I like to be at about chest level. So when I'm holding the gimbal, I'm usually at right about here and I'm crouched a little bit. So I get more traction. So that looks a little something like this. So let's say I'm shooting this room here, right guys? I'm gonna be about chest level. And I'm gonna make sure my lines are vertical. So I'm gonna go ahead and punch into this room. And that's what chest level looks like. Any higher, as you can see, I'm looking down and it just looks very, very distorted. Or I can come down here and look up and it looks kind of odd. This is like a dog or cat's eye view and that's not realistic for the viewer. So for that reason, you wanna keep it at chest level and make sure your lines are vertical. Now there's gonna be one exception to the rule of filming at chest level to keep your lines vertical and that's gonna be in the kitchen. As you can see, when filming in a kitchen, or most kitchens, filming at chest level is sometimes a little too low. For this kitchen, it's actually quite fitting because the cabinetry is not too high. But in most cases, the cabinets will sit really, really high, and when we film too low, we're looking too much underneath the cabinets. And that'll look a little something like this. And it's not the most pleasant view. All right guys, tip number two for you is move really slow. You can always speed things up in post, but it's if you're shooting in 24 frames like I do, it's gonna be really hard to slow things down. So let's go ahead and take things nice and slow. So we're gonna go ahead and shoot this dining room this way. I'm gonna start right here. I'll go ahead and hit record. Chest level, knees bent, getting ready for my ninja walk. And I'm just gonna go ahead and move in and punch in nice and slow. I'm gonna take my time, wrap all the way around. For me, I'm trying to keep the chandelier in the center as my focal point. And then what I'd like to do is I'm gonna keep that same position and take the movement and just go backwards with it. Just nice and slow. And by moving slow, what it allows us to do is speed up at the ends or in the middle and keep the rest of the clip in real time. And it looks like this. So tip number three is to use long drawn out transitions. So what do I mean by that? I mean keep walking forward and keep filming until you can't anymore. And this is exactly how I create my signature look. If you've seen some of my videos before, you'll notice I take a long walk from outside the property all the way into the property in a long straight line. This can also be done inside a home. So take this dining room for example. What I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna create a transition from the dining room into the bedroom. So I can be here, I'm gonna go ahead and hit record. And here I am at chest level and I'm just gonna go forward until I can't anymore. So we're gonna use that as one clip and next we'll go into the bedroom and the same thing here. I'm gonna do a long drawn out transition and I'm gonna keep moving until I can't anymore until my feet hit that bed. 
perfect. And I'll go ahead and do the same thing backwards just for good measure. And when I take those two clips into posts, I'll speed up the end of the first clip and speed up the beginning of the second clip. I'll mash them together and it looks like this. All right guys, tip number four, take close up shots. Guys, very few people in the industry are doing this. Not too many people do it. What I like to do is I like to switch from my wide angle and slap on this 85 millimeter and I'll make sure to get close up shots of important details of the home. Particularly, I do this a lot in luxury homes. So you just take a step back. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna shoot this nice chandelier here. I'm gonna make sure I'm exposed properly. And I'll just go ahead and truck side to side, back and forth. I'll do this with one item in a room. I'll move on to the next room and so on and so forth. There's no particular rules when you're getting close-ups, just as long as you are focused in on what needs to be shown. Some of my favorite close-up shots include shower heads, bathroom faucets, uh, kitchen faucets, stove tops, or any luxury items in a home that really, really stand out. All right guys, tip number five, let the camera do the hard work for you. When you're shooting real estate, a lot of times the agents and the homeowners are really short for time. You're taking away time from them being in their home when you're there doing your job. And I know sometimes we want to spend three, four, or five hours at a home to make sure it looks very, very nice. And sometimes we have to, especially if the home's that big. But for your average home, maybe 1,500 square feet, you want to be in and out because sometimes you have another job to go to or the homeowner really wants their space or whatever the case is. For that reason, I like to let the camera do the hard work for me. So examples of that would be auto white balance because as you shift from one room to another, the lighting often changes. So you'll go from a very warm room to a very cool room very fast. The camera will shift for you. Additionally, I like to do auto focus, especially when I'm doing close up. Here's a good example for you. Let's say I'm shooting kitchen details. What I like to do is I like to set my auto focus point to a flexible spot and I'll really focus in on the kitchen cabinet details. I'll make sure I'm in focus here and I'll move and truck to the side and as I move the focus point will shift to another position and it'll bring it in focus. As another example I like to also use this technique as a transition to go from one room to another. Let me show you. So what I'll do here is I'm gonna go ahead and film this dining room set and as I slowly move up the focus point is gonna transition into the living room so then I could then move over that, that way. So I'll go ahead and make sure I'm in focus. Perfect, and that's what this looks like. Cool, that'll do it for me guys. Those are the top five tips that I have to make your real estate videos go from good to great. If you guys have any questions or any concerns, drop a comment down below. I'm happy to interact with you guys. Love to answer any questions you guys might have. Um, if you guys got any value out of this video, do me a favor, hit the like and subscribe buttons down below. I got a lot more of this stuff coming and I will see you guys next time.